Dinosaurs are often thought of as giants, animals on a scale far larger than anything alive today. Many of these extraordinary animals were indeed absolutely huge. The biggest land animals that have ever existed on the planet were dinosaurs. But even these titans started out their lives as tiny babies. Dinosaur nesting sites provide an incredible glimpse into deep time. Embryos of animals that would one day grow into colossal beasts have been found that can tell paleontologists so much about how these creatures achieved such remarkable feats, as well as how certain dinosaurs cared for their young. Well, during our trip to South Africa to join a paleontological expedition exploring the fossil treasures of the Karoo semi-desert, Doug and I were lucky enough to go and see the oldest dinosaur nesting site that has ever been discovered, preserving eggs that date back to almost 200 million years ago. It was day three of our South African adventure, and after having seen so many remarkable hominid fossils and exploring the cradle of humankind, we were now setting off into the field to search for much older fossils. Having had a very early start and waking up at about half four in the morning, we had some difficulty loading our luggage. See, it's not as easy as it looks. Shut up. Eventually though, we were ready to set off. And just after 6am, we were finally on our way out of Johannesburg. Thrinax 2021 had officially begun. After a couple of hours of travelling south from the city, it was time to stop in order to fuel up the vehicles. But the place where we'd stopped wasn't just any ordinary fuel station. So we've got a nice uh, petrol station here. No? Car park and everything. There's Doug. And then... A zoo. Just a zoo with... Lions and black leopards. Not exactly the best place to keep wild animals, I'd say. This was a very bizarre sight for us Brits. This roadside zoo seemed to be keeping all sorts, including African wild dogs, as well as a black leopard which you can just about see in this footage. After several more hours of journeying through very, very flat land, Eventually, we started to see some mountains. We were approaching a town called Clarence, near the border with Lesotho, and driving through the magnificent Golden Gate Highlands National Park. The towering sandstone mountains were an incredible sight as we made our way along the winding roads, and we immediately understood what makes this area of the country so special. And clearly, we weren't the only ones who were impressed by the scenery here. It turns out that aerial shots of the beautiful National Park were used in Black Panther, so we were literally driving through the real-life Wakanda. Golden Gate is also a significant place for paleontological discoveries, with some extraordinary fossils having been recovered from the red sandstones forming the impressive cliffs. One of these discoveries comes from early Jurassic-aged rocks in the park, in what is known as the Elliott Formation, where the oldest dinosaur nesting site in the entire world was found. The dinosaur in question is a kind of sauropodomorph named Massospondylus carinatus, an early relative of the later giant long-necked sauropod dinosaurs. This species has actually been known about for a long time, with English anatomist Sir Richard Owen, creator of the name Dinosauria, first describing the animal in 1854 based on fossils found in Free State, South Africa. It was a medium-sized dinosaur, achieving lengths of between 4 to 6 metres, with a very small head at the end of an elongate neck. And Ben and I had actually met a beautiful specimen of this dinosaur the previous day while visiting the Origins Centre at Witts University. Well, here we have the, the new holotype of Massospondylus called Big Mama. The original one was actually destroyed uh, during a World War II bombing in, uh, in the UK, so this one has been named to replace that. Um, Massospondylus, of course, being a kind of sauropodomorph, which was originally thought to be a quadruped, um, but then more recent studies have shown that it couldn't actually rotate its hands properly, and um, despite it looking like it would need to support its weight on all fours, it was actually mostly bipedal. This revelation about the locomotion of Massospondylus was made thanks to a study published in 2007, which experimented with rotating the forelimb bones of the sauropodomorph and its relative Platyosaurus finding that neither of them had the required range of motion to enable efficient, regular quadrupedal walking. Therefore, although the proportions of the dinosaurs had led many previous researchers to assume they were quadrupeds, they were in fact bipedal. So despite the adults of Mathospondylus 
being bipedal, it turns out the juveniles were actually quadrupedal. And how do we know this? Well, a find in 1976 by paleontologist James Kitching in the Golden Gates National Park discovered the oldest dinosaur eggs ever to have been found, still the oldest ever to have been found, about 190 million years old. And inside were the embryos of these animals. Later excavations in the Golden Gate Park that started in 2006 revealed 10 more egg clutches from the road cutting exposing the remarkable site. Analyzing all the preserved embryos within the eggs revealed that these babies had a horizontally held neck, relatively large forelimbs almost the length of the hind limbs, and big heads for their size. So they must have been quadrupedal in order to move around. Interestingly, these proportions, as well as the lack of any well-developed teeth, also led the paleontologists to suggest that it might mean that they needed to be cared for by their parents. There are even some fossil footprints from the nesting site that have been attributed to baby massospondylus individuals, and they do indeed show them walking on both fore and hind feet. The idea that quadrupedality in the later giant sauropods therefore evolved through pedomorphosis, essentially the retention of juvenile traits into adulthood, was also proposed and is a pretty interesting concept. Just behind me here is the actual formation from which the massospondylus eggs and nesting site was discovered. I still see some bones in it. We'd actually been lucky enough to see a cast of the stunning fossilised egg clutch while touring the Witts University collections a couple of days prior. So here you have the head, you can see the, the orbit, the eye. <laughs> and here you have the skeleton going there with the ribs and the legs folded against the body. That's amazing. Inside the egg. So much valuable information about these dinosaurs can be gained from remarkable fossils such as these. Not only did it allow researchers to work out that Massospondylus switched from being a quadruped to a biped as it grew, but the layout of the clutches illustrates that the mothers would organise them into tightly packed rows, an adorable bit of inferred prehistoric behaviour. The fact that so many clutches have been recovered here too, and from a few different horizons within the exposure, shows that it was likely used as a seasonal nesting site by these animals. The sedimentology of the locality suggests that there was a pond present nearby, so this access to water and therefore also food sources, as well as the soft sediment for burying the eggs, would have made it an ideal place for the dinosaurs to nest. It was amazing to get to see such a unique locality that's given us so much insight into the paleobiology of these remarkable animals. But there was still more to see. After travelling on through the town of Clarens, we headed further southwest, and slightly off-road, to Mafube Mountain Retreat. Here it's possible to hike partway up one of the mountains where an impressive dinosaur trackway is located, and where you can quite literally walk with dinosaurs. The bedding surface of the sandstone on which these footprints are found preserves more than 80 three-toed dinosaur tracks altogether and also dates back to the early Jurassic. The prints were made when these dinosaurs walked along a dried up riverbed nearly 200 million years ago, with desiccation cracks formed by the drying out of the bed also being preserved alongside the footprints. The creators of these trackways all seem to have been theropods, since the prints show the three characteristically long pointed toes of this kind of dinosaur. Considering that there are both large tracks and small ones, Paleontologists have tentatively suggested that the smaller prints could have been made by Coelophysis, while the bigger ones might have been Dracovenator. Although Coelophysis is most famous from the Triassic Chinle formation of North America, there's actually another species known from Zimbabwe that dates to the same time as the Karoo rocks, and some remains of an indeterminate Coelophysis species have been recovered from the Elliott formation of South Africa. So it is definitely possible that this dinosaur created these smaller tracks. Dracovenator is a fascinating theropod too. We'd also seen a fantastic reconstruction of this dinosaur at the Origin Centre the previous day, where it's shown with a distinctive head crest reminiscent of Dilophosaurus. Although it's only known from some relatively fragmented cranial material, the bones do preserve the very base of what was presumably a paired head crest running along the top of the skull. This evidence, coupled with the fact that Dracovenator has been placed as a basal neotheropod, and so is grouped with other double-crested dinosaurs, including Dilophosaurus itself, suggests that this animal would indeed have had a very striking appearance in life. Dracovenator was a fairly large theropod, growing to an estimated 6 metres in length, and to be walking in the footsteps of such a fearsome beast was a brilliant experience. Walking along this mountain ridge, you couldn't help but try to imagine what this place was like in the Jurassic. 
a fantastic world teeming with animals the likes of which have never been known since. It really was a wonderful period of Earth's history and we felt so lucky to be able to explore it like this. Mafube Mountain Retreat is also very close to the site of yet another incredible dinosaur discovery, that of Ledu Mahadi. The fossil skeleton of this animal was found 25 kilometers away from Clarence, right on the border with Lesotho, and slightly to the east of where we were. Named in 2018, Ledu Mahadi comes from the Sasutu word for a giant thunderclap, while its species name also happens to be Mafube, though it's not in reference to the mountain retreat, it means dawn. This early Jurassic dinosaur was also a sauropodomorph, but was incredibly unique among these dinosaurs for the way in which it moved about. This was a massive creature, weighing in at around 12 metric tons, literally reaching sauropod sizes, despite not being a true sauropod. However, it was actually quadrupedal. Ledu Mahadi shows that quadrupedality in the sauropodomorph lineage had evolved by the late Triassic, within non-sauropod sauropodomorphs. The later bipedal sauropodomorphs then represent what must have been secondary reversions to bipedality in some lineages closer to the base of true sauropods, suggesting that this lineage was undergoing some experimentation with their locomotory styles. Ledu Mahadi also showed for the first time that non-sauropod sauropodomorphs had convergently evolved with sauropods to grow to massive body sizes. Plus, the fact that it lived in the early Jurassic suggests that these large-bodied sauropodomorphs were unaffected by, or at least very quick to recover from, the effects of the Triassic-Jurassic extinction. The anatomy of Ledu Mahadi's forelimbs are also of particular interest. Incredibly, they were not columnar, pillar-like structures as in giant sauropods, instead being slightly flexed. They were still very robust in order to support the great weight of the dinosaur, but the partial flexion is a very interesting feature, highlighting the different way in which they achieved quadrupedality. So we'd been very lucky to visit a part of the country absolutely filled with phenomenal paleontological treasures that have taught us so much about dinosaur paleobiology and evolution. But it was time to move on and keep heading further back in time, to where we could find Permian and Triassic age rocks. We kept driving southwest for several more hours, until eventually, once the sun had long since set, we finally made it to where we'd be staying for the next week while we hunted for much older fossils. We have made it to our first destination. Our third day in South Africa was yet another incredible experience. Despite the hours and hours of driving, it was still a fantastic adventure and absolutely worth it to get to walk where dinosaurs had once been. Seeing where the oldest dinosaur nesting site ever had been found was utterly amazing too. It really is mind-blowing that such fossils can be discovered, providing an invaluable glimpse into the lives of these long-disappeared animals. But now the expedition had officially started. Join us in the next episode as Thrinax 2021 finally gets underway. Come with us on our first day of field work as we search for the fossils of the bizarre looking Lystrosaurus and as we get to stand on the Permian Triassic boundary itself, the rock division that marks the worst mass extinction event in the history of life on Earth. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new, and I really hope you're enjoying our South African adventures so far. A huge thank you once again to everyone who donated and made this trip possible, allowing Doug and I, as well as students of Wits University, to get this experience doing paleontological fieldwork.